Good morning. Um, I just had a quick word to come on here and share that the Lord's been, um, I have a little puppy over there, that the Lord's been putting in my heart um, to share with other people um, that he taught me. And I'm sitting here, <clears throat> it's a beautiful day outside. I'm actually reading the Bible, spending time with the Lord by candlelight today. Sometimes it's fun to do that. Got my coffee, my Bible, spending some time with the Lord. But um, I just wanted to share this with you guys really quick. And so I just, let me pray really quick. Um, Lord, I just pray that you would um, open everybody's spiritual eyes and ears to receive the word that you have for them, Lord, too that your light would light up any dark corners of our hearts, Lord, where darkness is hiding, that you would bring it to the light so that it can be dealt with, Lord, and kicked out, God, that we could walk in the freedom and the fullness that you have for us, Lord. Um, let no weapon formed against us and this word prosper, and let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. In Jesus' name, amen. So um, what the Lord's been putting on my heart to share is... Um, uh, a different approach um, to dealing with sin and so what the Lord had taught me when I was trying to get out of some strangleholds um, that sin and sin practices and behaviors had on me in many different areas and getting loose and free from them um, he taught me to to deal with sin in a different way because human nature our fleshly nature is um, to hide our sin, um, you know, do our sinful things when no one's watching, you know, people especially, but somehow we kind of convince ourselves that since we can hide it from people, we can also hide it from God. Um, and it's just not true. Um, but the darkness and the hold that sin gets on us when we find ourselves in that place, it, it even twists our thinking patterns and it twists our thoughts and our belief patterns. And so a lot of people, yeah, we think that we're hiding this from people and people can't see it in our lives that that means that we're hiding it from God, but it's not true. And so God was just in a gentle way reminding me and then also having me remind you guys that nothing is hidden from the Lord. Um, even the things that are hidden so deeply from people, the Lord knows exactly what we're doing when we're doing wrong, when we're doing good too, but we're talking about sin here. So it's not hidden from the Lord. And so you can't win that battle. So number one, stop trying to hide your sin from God. Number two, um, that sin, we can hide it for so long from people around us. But what happens is the darkness and the ickiness and the filth from it it will build up inside of us to pretty soon it cannot be hidden from those around us anymore it will just come oozing out just think of a container right you can fill it fill it fill it while there's empty space but once that thing becomes so full of that substance it begins to spill out so whatever it is that you're doing in secret whatever it is that you're indulging in that's sinful that you know you shouldn't be partaking in whether it's a big thing a big bite that you're biting off of that sinful practice or a little tiny little tiny taste a little tiny peak whatever it is it will eventually if you keep partaking in it it will eventually build up inside of you so much that the only place it can go is out and it will become apparent to those around you so um you don't want to let it get to that place because that can be a very embarrassing place to be i would rather deal with my sin in private with the lord and let him clean it out of me and not let other people have to have anything to do with it rather than it coming spilling out of me where then it's it's known and a lot of times that it's a very humbling experience and if it comes to that i've had times yes it has to come to that you know all of us will but if i could choose and if i could encourage you Deal with it while it is smaller before it becomes a monster and you have onlookers, okay? Um, and that's not to push you into shame because the enemy will try to push you into shame. But if it comes to that, it usually does feel a bit shameful as a part of that process. But know that if you ever find yourself in that place, run to the Lord and he will remove that from you. Um because there's no condemnation for those of us who are in Christ. But a natural consequence of sin um, 
we will feel some shame, but we can bring that to the Lord and, and the Lord can remove that from us. But if you can choose, choose to deal with it with the Lord privately before it has to become a public spectacle um, to bring you back to humility and repentance. So that being said, what the Lord was showing me is, you know, we can't hide it from him. Um, and he's the only one who can help us get freed from it. So isn't that funny that the very one who can help cut off those shackles that keep us participating in these sinful, vile practices, these things that defile us, these things that are huge stumbling blocks and keep us from going the places that the Lord has prepared for us to go, that keep us from being the person that he's created us to be, the very one who can free us, that's the one that we're, we hide from and we run from and, and we refuse to go to him. So he was saying, okay, so with having the information that I already know everything, deal with this in a different way. Run to me as soon as you realize that you're in sin. Sometimes we know that we're toying with a sinful practice before we even step into it and we decide to step into it anyway. Other times it's become such a habit and such a part of who we are that it's not until we're like deep in it and where we're like, oh, and we realize and we feel that conviction of the Holy Spirit. And the Lord is saying as soon as, whether it's before, whether it's in the middle, whether it's after, as soon as you realize that you either were going towards sin or that you were participating in sin, run to me. I already know everything and I have the answer. So running to the Lord and of course saying, Lord, I'm so sorry. Um, because every single thing that we do that is sin, that is against God. It's against ourselves. It can be against other people, but ultimately it's against God. And he was tortured and died that horrific death on the cross. And when the Lord helped me to understand that, when I'm participating in sinful practices, it's like I'm torturing him and beating him and spitting in his face and pushing that crown of thorns onto his head and humiliating him in public all over again. And why would we want somebody that we love, somebody who loves us so much, why would we want to be a part of that? Um, and so that has been a really great motivator for me, like what to get a few moments of satisfaction in some area of life. Um, why would I ever want to heap that onto my God and my Lord and my Savior and my best friend. I don't want to do that, especially not knowingly, you know, and so that's been a really good motivator when I'm in a fight against a sinful practice that's creeping up and that's that I'm tempted to take part in. I think of that and I just think of how much I love the Lord and I definitely don't want to do that to him. And that has helped me many times to turn away from a sinful practice. Um, and if you're not yet at that place where you love the Lord in that way, ask him to help you um, to love him in the way that you would never want to hurt him. Um, and then those times when I find that I've been doing, done something sinful or I didn't realize it or you know I did something without thinking and then the Lord gently tells me, hey, I don't want you to do that or hey, did you hear how you sounded or what you did or whatever? And the Lord brings that to the forefront of my mind and my spirit and tells me that that's not good and that's sinful. He wants me to stop and I just stop and I just, I don't beat myself up. Um, in the past, I would beat myself up. Um, I would have all these negative thoughts that I'm like, you know, a horrible sinner, that I'm not worthy of the Lord's love, that the Lord doesn't love me. And then, of course, the enemy sees us beating ourselves up and he comes in and he beats us up as well. And he plants more lies and um, condemnation about us and about God and tells us all these lies about now that we sinned, you know, what God thinks of us, etc. And that's an ugly downward place that you can quickly slide into and then you go farther away from God because you believe the lies and the wrong thinking and so instead of that I don't do that anymore the Lord has taught me that's not true that he freely forgives and he wants us to come straight to him so he can forgive it and can cover it in his blood and we don't have to suffer um, any more than we need to so um, I just come straight to the Lord and I just say Lord I'm sorry and sometimes that's it. It's as simple as that. And sometimes I just say, you know, or sometimes, Lord, I'm so sorry that I did that. Please forgive me. 
but I do that knowing he's not withholding forgiveness. I don't have to beg for his forgiveness. He already died on the cross showing me that he wants to forgive me every time I sin. So if you can get that perspective in your mind and your heart, it's so helpful for you to not sink into that condemnation of your own mind and of the enemy that he tries to bring. Um, and then another important part of this process is asking the Lord and help, asking him to help you understand. So whether it's a sin that you found yourself in, you're like, oh, and, you know, I didn't realize I do that. Or whether it's a sinful pattern that you've been doing for months or even years or decades and you just can't get free from it and you you try really hard and you get on a good track and you're free from it for a while but then after days or weeks or months pass you find yourself going back and participating again and then you feel bad and then you beat yourself up and you pray to the lord and you cry out to him for mercy and then you you stay away from it for a while but then you always find yourself back in that place it can be that or it can just be you know you found you realized oh gosh i snapped at that person and it's not a pattern, but that day you did it, you know, and you're like, you know, so whatever the circumstance is, the Lord, a very powerful thing that the Lord has taught me is to get curious about it and ask the Lord and say, Lord, why did I do that? Or if it's something that you're doing continually, Lord, why am I doing that? Because there's a reason behind it. And um, the Lord wants to engage you in a conversation and he wants to help you understand it. If you just bury your head in the sand and you pretend like you're not doing it or you just don't want to deal with it you're going to keep doing it and it's going to keep bringing ruin in one way or another because that is what sin does um and the enemy uses that to steal kill and destroy in so many ways that's the ultimate goal and so that's why you really want to get free from sin patterns and it's a journey for the rest of our days on earth there's um we're not going to be 100% completely free from every sin, uh, no matter how big or how small it seems, until we go to heaven. Because we do have this, some people call it, earth suit, our flesh. Um, but the journey is to get, to just keep letting the Lord continue to shave off all of those sinful things from us. And the sanctification, becoming more and more like our Lord and Savior every single day. So just continuing to go towards him. So getting getting curious with him and allowing him to explain to you why you keep doing that or why that day you did that maybe sometimes there's something that the lord has freed me from a sinful pattern and i haven't done it for years and then all of a sudden i did it not on purpose i wasn't going and seeking to be sinful but there was a trigger and it triggered me and i went back into that sinful pattern and i'm like lord i thought that we like totally dealt with that what is that you know and the lord will give you the answers because whatever whatever the circumstance is there's a reason behind it <clears throat> and then i and he'll explain it to you and and you talk about it and you pray about it and you ask him then for the strategy okay how do i stop doing this you know what should i do next time lord how do i fight this off because we have the power of the holy spirit if you have the holy spirit indwelled in you you have the power of the holy spirit to overcome that thing now you just need the strategy in your mind so that when the time comes or when the trigger comes or when that old pattern raises its head um, or the temptation shows up in front of you, you have a strategy now with the power of the Lord to overcome it, to resist it, to rebuke it, to run away from it instead of running straight into the arms of that sin um, and becoming an overcomer. And every time you overcome that sin, it adds more power to you so that the next time it comes, you're more and more powerful. And then the next time it comes, and pretty soon you've completely overcome that sin. And so, um, yeah, get curious and have conversations with the Lord. Um, and so I want to go back to those patterns that we have that maybe have been um, a pattern in our lives, a sinful pattern for years, even decades. And um, a lot of times what those stem from are, um, there's a need, right? There's a need inside of us and we didn't know the right way to get that need met. So we found another way that meets a need, but it's wrong and it's sinful. And that could have been something that we found out on our own. It could have been something that somebody introduced to us and it met a need. So again, 
that's a bit of knowledge that will really help you. Um, there's that word, that Bible verse that says, my people perish for lack of knowledge, but the more knowledge that we have about the Lord, about how his kingdom works, about sin, about the enemy, about ourselves, those are all weapons of warfare to help us to be overcomers because we have the power to live this life as overcomers. We don't need to be tied into sin patterns and we don't need to um, be reactive to triggers. We're going to have triggers and sin in front of us every day of our life. And the Lord has given us the power and he will give us the strategy and the knowledge to be overcomers and not to give into those things and defile ourselves, grieve the Lord's heart and hurt other people by taking part in sin practices. Some of them, when we take part, those things show up quicker, the negative consequences. Some of them don't show up for years, but don't be deceived. They will show up. That is the nature of sin. So um, learn to despise sin. Help ask the Lord. If you, if you love sin, if you are looking forward to taking part in whatever sin it is that you're taking part in, ask the Lord to change your heart. He sees it. He knows it. He's not oblivious to it. And he's the one who has the power to change your heart. Say, Lord, Take that desire away from me. I don't want that. And continue fighting and pressing in and filling yourself up with, with things of the Lord's kingdom until you win the battle. He will do it. I have been freed from so many things and I continue to be freed and he continues to rewrite and give me new patterns and help me to not be reactive to things. But when you understand you know, what was the trigger there? You know, when you understand these things, knowledge is power, even in this spiritual realm. And so asking the Lord, Lord, why do I, when this happens, why do I do this? Or why do I run to that sin? And let the Lord show you what is the need, okay, that it's meeting, because it's meeting a need if you continue to go to it over and over again. And then, Lord, how do I meet the need in the right way? Lord, you please meet that need in me in the right way and show me what I am to do and what I am not to do and empower me. And sometimes you might need an accountability partner even to help you in those times. Obviously, in a time of temptation, you run to the Lord first. You open the word of God. You pray to the Lord. You rebuke the enemy and the um, demonic things coming against you out of your mouth in the name of Jesus. You turn on worship music. You can turn on um, Bible reading to listen to. You worship God out of your mouth. All of these are equivalent to you picking up the sword and fighting off the thing that's coming against you, your enemy. Um, and then sometimes on top of that, if you have a person that you can trust that loves you and that can walk through this with you, that you can reach out to and say, hey, I need prayer. And it's up to you how much detail you share with them. You can say, hey, I need prayer. I'm fighting temptation right now. That's all you can say. Or, hey, um, I'm fighting temptation um, you know, in the area of lying right now. Can you please pray for me? You know, um, Or you can call a person and say, hey, can you pray with me um, right now? And remember, boundaries are important. You don't have to spill everything when you ask for prayer. You can give as little or as much information. And if that person is really for you and they really love you, <clears throat> they're not going to pry, you know. But there are times when we need to give more detail so we can pray more pointedly against that thing that's coming against you. So um, get some people in your lives that you can share those details with. Um, even one person, um, just ask the Lord to send you someone like that because those pointed prayers... They do really, really, really help. Um, but again, you don't want to share all the details with everybody, okay? So I hope this is encouraging to you. Um, I hope you'll get curious and ask the Lord to reveal to you um, when you find yourself in a sinful time, in a sinful moment, in a, in a reactive thing, um, that you'll run to the Lord and that you'll work it out with Him and allow Him to shine light into that darkness so that you guys can obliterate it and get it out and not let it be a pattern in your life anymore. And you become an overcomer. May everybody become an overcomer in the mighty name of Jesus and the power and the authority of God. In Jesus' name, amen.